In order to calculate the rate at which the electric field between these circular parallel plates is changing, we're going to apply Maxwell's law of induction. Now, in order to apply that law, we first have to draw what we call an Amperian loop. This is basically just an imaginary loop that we draw in a strategic manner. Now, in this case, we are dealing with an induced magnetic field at a distance of six millimeters, whereas the plates themselves have a radius of only three millimeters. Now we've labeled the radius of the plates capital R and then the radial distance at which the magnetic field is induced with a lowercase r. And we'll notice that the induced magnetic field lies outside of the circular plate region. And that is why we have chosen to draw our Amperian loop at that location outside of the radius of the circular plates. So. To summarize that information, we know the radius of the plates themselves is three millimeters, and then the radial distance at which we have an induced magnetic field is six millimeters. Now, for those of you who wanna skip ahead, we're going to basically develop this equation, which will help us calculate the desired quantity. But for those of us who wanna see where that comes from, we can apply Maxwell's law of induction as follows. We can see that we have a dot product between the magnetic field and then this little arc length labeled DS. We have come to a location on our Amperian loop and we've drawn a magnetic field line that is tangent to that loop pointing to the right. And the length of a little circular piece of that Amperian loop, basically a little arc length, we have labeled that as ds. And we can see that the angle between those two vectors is zero degrees. Keep that in mind as we rewrite the dot product. We may recall that when you rewrite a dot product, you can take the magnitude of the two vectors and then multiply it by the cosine of the angle between them, which again, in this case, is zero degrees. Over on the other side of the equation, we have the rate of change in the electric flux. Let's recall that electric flux is equal to an electric field times an area. The electric field is symbolized by these purple crosses, and then the area would be the actual area of the circular plate. And so we're going to rewrite the derivative as follows. We'll have the derivative of EA with respect to time. Now, let's understand that the area of the plate isn't changing. It's a constant value. There's no reason to believe that the area of the circular plate would be changing. So we can actually factor out the area to the outside of that derivative, essentially. So we actually can rewrite it as follows. And that leaves us with dE dt, which is the quantity that we seek to determine. Now, the cosine of zero degrees is one, so we don't need to regard that at all. The magnetic field, the induced magnetic field, at each point on the Amperian loop is a constant. So we can factor that out side of the integral. So now we're just left with the integral of ds. Now we said the ds is just a small little length. It's basically a differential length. It's very tiny. But what we need to do to integrate around our entire Amperian loop is to get the complete distance around that Empyrean loop, rather than just a little piece of that distance as symbolized by ds. Now, of course, the complete length around our Empyrean loop would just be the circumference of that circle. So we're going to rewrite the integral ds as the circumference around our Empyrean loop. That would be 2 pi multiplied by the radius of our Empyrean loop. Now, as for the area, we would use the area of the actual circular plate here. And that, because it's a circle, can be symbolized by pi times capital R squared. Notice we're using capital R because it's the area of the circular plate, and then multiplied by the rate of change in the electric field. So finally, we have an equation we can use, and we're going to solve the equation for our desired quantity, the dE dt value. So we'll divide both sides of the equation by this entire quantity. And that's going to give us an expression that we can use to plug in all of the known values. So these will cancel out on the right-hand side. If we look carefully, it looks like the pi's are going to cancel out as well. And that leaves us with uh, the final expression we need. So we just have to plug in all the known values. Let's go back up and make sure we have the magnetic field, the radius of our Amperian loop, the radius of the circular plates, and then these two values are just constants. So if we sneak a peek back here, indeed we have the magnetic field strength is two times 10 to the minus seventh Tesla. We've already labeled this as lowercase r, and then the radius of the plates is uppercase r. So let's plug in all those known values. So all of the known quantities have been plugged in, just a couple of points here. Remember that the radii were given in millimeters, so we've 
converted them to meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. So just make sure you do that. And then we've plugged in the constant values. We have that mu naught and that epsilon naught. Those are constant values. We've plugged those in. And then don't forget to square the radius in the denominator. So when you do all of that, you should get about 2.40 times 10 to the power of 13 is equal to the rate of change of the electric field. And recall that the unit of electric field is volts per meter and the unit of time is seconds. So you're going to be left with volts per meter per second, which can be more succinctly written as volts per meter seconds. So this would be the correct answer to the question.